In this problem, we're going to solve this differential equation, and we're also going to find what's called the transient terms, and we're going to find the largest interval over which the solution is defined. So lots of stuff. So first of all, notice that this is what's called a linear differential equation because it has the following form. So we have dy dx plus p of x times y equals f of x. So if you have a differential equation that fits this form, it's called a linear differential equation. In particular, this is a first order linear differential equation. It's first order because the highest derivative we see in the problem is the first derivative. So whenever you have a linear differential equation, the first step is to make it look like this, which in this case it's already done. You can easily see that we have p of x equal to 1. That's the important part in this problem. The next step is to compute something called the integrating factor. So the formula for the integrating factor is mu of x equals e to the integral of big P of x dx. This is called the integrating factor. So in this problem, there's a 1 here. So whatever's in front of the y, that's your big P. So in this case, mu of x is equal to e to the integral of 1 dx. Well, when you integrate 1, you just get x, okay? And we don't have to worry about the constant of integration. So mu of x is equal to e to the x. I'm going to put this in a box because this is an accomplishment. Again, step 1, make it look like this. It's already done in this problem. Step 2, compute the integrating factor. Boom. Step 3, multiply your differential equation by your integrating factor. So we're going to put an e to the x here. We're going to put one here. And we're going to put one here. So I'll just write it over here. So e to the x dy dx plus e to the x y equals, when you multiply e to the x times e to the 6x, you add the exponents. So you get x plus 6x, so you get e to the 7x. And now here is the step that is the most important. This is the key step. So all of this will magically become d dx of, and it's your integrating factor, so e to the x, times your unknown function that you're trying to solve for. So in this case, we're, we're trying to solve for y, so y is our unknown function. And the reason I say it that way, the reason I didn't just say, oh, it's always y, is because sometimes you have different variables. You'll have, you know, dx dt, you'll have dr d theta. So it depends what you're looking for. So we're looking for y, so that's why we have the y here. So you might say, what happened to all of this stuff? Ah, well, check this out. Recall the product rule. If you have f times g prime, it's the derivative of f. Think of f as the first piece and g is the second piece, so the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's exactly what's happening here. In fact, let's check it. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x times the second, which is y, plus the first, which is e to the x, times the derivative of y, which is dy dx. So when you take the derivative of this product, you get what's here. And so this always works. You basically just memorize this. So memorize this step. You're supposed to memorize this step. If you don't, then <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's how you do it, right? So um, it always works out. But you can check your work every single time. So you write it down, and it's always, always mu of x, and then your function. And then you can take the derivative, and it'll always check. Now what you do is you integrate. So I'm just going to write integrate. Notice I didn't put the integral symbol over here. Because when I do, then that forces me to put a dx, and I don't really have room over here. You see, if I do this, I have to put a dx over here, and people will always forget, so I always forget, and I never have room, so I like to write integrate. When you integrate the derivative, it goes away. When you integrate this, you just divide by 7. Right? That's something from, from calculus, and then you add c. So how? Why? If you have e to the 7x dx... You, you could make a u substitution. You could let u equal to 7x. And then you would say du equals 7dx. 
then you say, okay, there's no seven in our integral, so this is really du over seven equals dx. So this is equal to one seventh e to the u du, right? Because the dx is one seventh du, and this is one seventh e to the seven x plus c. So whenever you have e and a number times x, just just divide by it. Almost done. The last thing to maybe do is divide everything by e to the x. So we're going to divide by e to the x. So dividing this by e to the x, we just get y. Dividing this by e to the x, here I'll write it, it'll be this. And dividing this by e to the x, we get that. Okay, so the next step is to realize that uh, these cancel. So you have e to the 7x over e to the x. That gives you e to the 6x. So this is 1 7th e to the 6x because you, you subtract the exponents, right? e to the 7x over e to the x is e to the 7x minus x, which is e to the 6x. And then this one, I'm just going to leave it like this, c over e to the x. Oh, this is a nice problem. This is a really nice problem because some cool stuff is going to happen. So that's the answer. That's the answer. So as a quick recap, uh, first thing you do is you make sure it looks like this. Next thing you do is you find your big P. It's whatever's in front of your y. Compute your integrating factor, okay? Uh, once you have that, Multiply your entire differential equation by your integrating factor. Then again, memorize this step. Basically, this is always going to be d dx, and it's always mu times your unknown function. Integrate, finish. We wanted to know uh, the interval of definition, so the largest interval over which the solution is defined. I'll call that i. In this case, uh, there's no issues anywhere. There's no natural logs. There's no square roots. There's no division by zero. Uh, everything is defined everywhere, so it's going to be all real numbers. So the largest interval over which the solution is defined is this. This function is, you know, no problems anywhere. It's defined for all values of x. The transient terms, so transient terms, transient terms are terms that approach zero. So transient terms are terms that approach zero as x approaches infinity. So if you take the limit of this as x approaches infinity, well, this is going to go to infinity, so that's no good. This is going to go to zero because it's a number over something huge. So the transient term in this problem is this. If you kind of think about it from an intuitive perspective, as, let me use a different color here, as x approaches zero, of infinity rather, all your solutions approach this one, right? Because this approaches zero, and so all your solutions approach this solution here because x is getting really, really big and this approaches zero. So it's kind of interesting. So again, transient terms are terms that uh, approach zero as x goes to infinity. So all you do is you look at it and you just take the limit of everything and you can just eyeball it. If it goes to zero, it's a transient term. Sometimes there are no there are no transient terms. And also sometimes this is a little bit harder uh, to find. I hope this video has been helpful.